Let's talk about how you actually do this at the machine, this kind of a shaping cut, and the code involved on the control. Now every uh, CNC control has a, a code that calls a subprogram. Most all controls use an M98 for that code. This calls a subprogram. Now you can't just call a subprogram without having the name for a subprogram. So the the code on the on this line in your main program that's going to be calling your subprogram, the designation for calling the program is is a P letter P, and then the program name. We're going to use the name 1000 in the case of this example. Now this by itself would run the program 1000 fine, um, but in the case of what we want to do, we're going to want to loop through this program over and over again. So you need another code that's, that's L for a loop, and then in this example we're going to use 50 times. You don't have to have this L on this line if you're just running program 1000 and coming back to the main program. So in our in our sub program, first of all we got to have a program in the control with this name or you'll get an alarm. If you call that program it's going to tell you program not found, it's going to give you an alarm. So in the memory of the machine outside of the program which is the main program here, you got to have a program named O1000 in this case. Okay, this, uh, all, all programs in most CNC machines start with the letter O in the name and then you have some digits out numbers after that uh, of whatever the control uh, can handle. Some controls can use only four digits, some can use many, many digits. I think the Mazak Integrex here can use like six or eight digits in the name. But that doesn't really make any difference. It'll still use a name like this. So, and then you could have in brackets, you could have a some kind of description of your program. The control won't read this, anything in brackets in a, in a CNC program, but it, it helps you as the programmer or operator to, to know what the program's for. And it's kind of nice to put it in. Now, the first line in the program, well, let me draw, <clears throat> let me draw a picture over here of what we're, I'm, I'm going to talk about initially, and then I'm going to talk about what I'm doing in the video here. Say we have a, a part <clears throat> with a round bore, and we want to um, shape a keyway in there. Just a simple part like this. Um, I'll draw it like this, and we'll draw a section through it in another view so we can look at the side view of it. So down here, let's say this part looks like this, it's the outside of the part, and we've got our key slot, and then we've got our bore in the part here. So this is our section through it. Let's say the part's one inch thick, just for this discussion. And we're going to position our tool, let's say this is our, our cutting tool, it could be anything, a boring bar or something with a cutting tip in it. And we're going to rapid the machine up here and position this say 50 thousandths in Z above the part and we're going to put a, the cutting edge of our tool right here so that it can take the first pass in the key. Um, but actually, usually this is programmed around the center line of the spindle, so if our tool was right here, like this, we would be programming it in relation to the center line, so we would have to know this distance here in order to put our cutting tool in the right place. So going back to this view, we're gonna the first move we're gonna make is we're gonna go forward this direction. Let's call this the Y plus direction on the machine. So if we move forward this way and went down, straight down in Z and then came back up to our original Z height like this with this movement. So 
we're gonna go forward say we make we go forward 10,000ths of an inch here this little straight line and we go down in Z and then we come back a minus 0.008 thousandths and back up to our original Z height here so that's gonna look like this in our program we're gonna in the case of this we're, we can wrap it because there's nothing in our way so if you had if you were milling something else you might want to have a different movement here but we can wrap it so we can go into the uh, G O O rapid mode and then we can go into G 91 which is an incremental movement mode this is a uh, different than a, an absolute positioning mode where an absolute is in relation to the machine coordinates it's going to move to the numbers you give it an incremental move is from wherever it starts from or, or the machine is setting right at that moment it's going to move the direction you program from that start point the distance you program irrespective of the machine coordinate system so we're going to go the G91 mode incremental and then we're going to go Y.01 to move our ten thousandths of an inch here and then we're going to go into the a uh, feeding mode G01 here and we're going to go down to Z minus one point let's say one inches to get the the fifty thousandths on each side of the part here to clear through the part now on a G01 line if you don't have a feed rate it's going to give you an alarm so you got to have a feed rate of some sort feed of say 200 inches a minute now this um this feed rate seems kind of fast but in reality for this kind of a shaping operation this is a very slow surface footage because if you divide that number by 12 that's the actual surface footage you're you're moving at so these things are done at very high feed rate even done at rapid feed rate on the machine if you want to and it still wouldn't be that fast unless your machine moves really fast so 200 inches a minute down and then because we're not hitting any material or anything back down here we're down at this point we can move back in a rapid movement mode so G O O can read my writing and, and we're gonna go Y uh, that's a Y not an X so Y in a minus point oh oh eight thousandths to get back up to there then we got to uh, move back to our original Z position. So we're going to go Z of 1.1 inches. So that brings us back to our um, original Z height. So this is is the complete subprogram. But in order to execute a subprogram and get it to return to the main program, you got to put an M99 at the end of the program. Mm -hmm. So this is the complete thing here. Now you could program all of this, every movement of this, you know, and probably do it in your CAM software that way. But this is a lot more convenient to do it this way because you can change these Y movement numbers to increase or decrease your depth of cut. And also, <coughs> excuse me, to move the number of times forward or the distance you want to travel you can control it with this uh, number of repeats and the depth of cut so it's really easy to edit this and make it do what you want so when you return back to the main program every time it's going to loop through this 50 times when you watch this run on the control it looks just like it's looping this program around and round and round you don't ever really see it go back to the main program but technically it is and it's counting down and after the 50th time it's going to go back to the main program for good and you probably want to go back into a G90 mode an, uh, an absolute positioning mode right at that moment so in this case on this program because we're moving forward two thousandths of an inch for every um, loop through this program the tool itself is actually going to move here a hundred thousandths of an inch forward and like I say if this isn't the right amount you can adjust the number of repeats loops to the program 
or um, the depth of cuts here, you know, as far as how far you moved and why, in this case, to get to the end point where you want for the depth that you were cutting. Of course, this all has to have a machine that you can orient the tool and, and hold it there on the Integrex machine, like in this video, the it can index the tool every 15 degrees and clamp it, so it's most ideal for something like this to do it. Um, on some machines I've, I've had to, I've done this, I've had, had to actually make a key, put a key on the spindle face and a key on the tool to clamp it. <coughs> Excuse me. Whenever you start talking like this, you, you have this coughing fit for some reason. I don't know why. And, uh, and, uh, and orient the tool, but you got to be careful not to turn the spindle on or do anything like that when you have that key there. In fact, this whole thing, you never even turn the spindle of the machine on. You just do it with the spindle turned off. And the, and the spindle clamped and oriented in, in one location. So, that's to cut a simple keyway. Now, in the video th that you're watching here, I have this shape of this part. It's kind of like a radius bore with a thread in it. And then um, we're shaping out whatever's left the end mill. I milled this out and there's these radiuses left in these corners right here and I have to get that down to a the drawing calls for a maximum of 15 thousandths radius corner radius in the corners so I designed a tool that holds these um, diamond inserts and I position them such that they would end up in these corners but this insert is on the other side of the tool over here so when I rotate the tool <coughs> excuse me around its axis the tools axis it, this insert ends up over here on this side so to do this I'm rotating the C axis so I think this was C minus if I remember right this way and then I to get this end of this radius that the end mill left up to the tip of this insert by rotating back this way and then I, I incremented into the tool with the rotary axis which in this case when I calculated it out uh, a C of, of 0.05 degrees ended up being very close to two thousandths of an inch cut depth so my program for this looked kind of like this. It was a G O O G ninety one C point O five because I'm going on this side. I was going in the positive. On the, on this side, I'm going in the negative. So there's two programs I used, one for each side. And and then the next line, I was I was going G O one to Z minus two point. 850 if I'm yeah I think it was 850 if I remember right because I started a quarter inch above the part in front of the part and I went in to a depth of 2.6 inches and then I G O O to X because this is the this on my on the integrex is the X axis going up and down X minus point one because that's the minus direction going downward and then I I go to Z um, 2.850 back up to my original Z and then X point one back to my original spot and then an M99 the, the re end and repeat of the sub program so that's uh, that's how I did that and then I did it until I got up to this shoulder and then as you saw in the program I rotated the tool around and started over here and rotated back until I got up to this shoulder this this was a 30 degree angle on this and this was square to the bore on this side so the inserts were positioned in the tool when I built built it to um, form these angles in there so that's how it's working in this program but the principle is the same for either either method you just have to uh, you know decide what you're going to cut of course so let's go back to the 
program to the video and we're going to see a, a little bit of making the tool and the finished part. Thank <laughs> you. 